good morning and welcome to our worship this morning on the 28th of June 2020. And we focus our worship this morning and we think about uh, our emergence from the COVID-19 pandemic and that effect on the church and our lives in general. So let us come together in worship and join together in the spirit. Our call to worship. Gathered in the Holy Spirit, we've come to worship, to sing, read, pray, and hear God's word, because God's love lasts forever. Even when God seems far away, we know God's love lasts forever. Even when nothing is going right and we're ready to give up, we know God's love lasts forever. When people treat us badly, we know God's love lasts forever. When we're all alone, we know God's love lasts forever. When we are unsure of the future, God's love lasts forever. When we start to emerge from lockdown, but worry, we know God's love lasts forever. Even when it seems like we'll never get back into our church building, we know God's love lasts forever. So let us worship God together in spirit. And we join together in song and our first hymn, Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring. John Bucky and posted on the Social Justice Resource Centre website and the prayer is entitled Breaking Down Barriers. So let us come to God in our prayers of approach. 
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who reached across the ethnic boundaries between Samaritan, Roman and Jew, who offered fresh sight to the blind and freedom to captives, help us to break down the barriers in our community, enable us to see the reality of racism and bigotry, and free us to challenge and uproot it from ourselves, our society and our world. And we share the Lord's Prayer, saying together, God in community, holy in one, there is no one like you in our lives. This we know as we pray together, saying the words that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen and we continue in worship by sharing our first scripture reading this morning which is from jeremiah 28 verses 5 to 9 Jeremiah 28 verses 5 to 9. You may wish to pause this recording whilst you find that in your Bibles. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. May God add his blessing to this reading of his word. Amen. So our sermon today, I decided to split into two parts. The first part, focusing on the reading we just heard from Jeremiah, and then later in the service, we'll have the second part of the sermon, focusing on the reading from Matthew. So our set lectionary Bible passages this morning are quite short in length, and perhaps you're thinking that might be a good thing, that we have focused and pithy readings. But actually, I think not. And certainly, as with the Jeremiah passage, you can miss quite a lot of the context in which the dialogue is set. The fact that Hananiah is prophesying falsely is easily missed in the one reading of the few verses we have been given. What you need to do is read the whole of Jeremiah 28 to grasp something of what is going on here. And what is happening here does in fact speak into our current situation here in the 21st century. Let us examine who Jeremiah was. An Old Testament prophet who was born around 657 BC. His ministry lasted roughly between 627 and 586 BC. He is considered as one of the great prophets in the kingdom of Judah. He is seen as a bit of a doom merchant and unfortunately for Jeremiah, his mission is one of prophesying the destruction of Jerusalem. Therefore, 
much of his ministry takes place in a time of upheaval and exile. There is a long period of angst amongst the exiled nation of Israel. There is a great desire to get back to Jerusalem and the temple. Does this feel familiar? And yet in this period of history, of course, exile and return were more than likely as a result of conflict and wars. The Babylonians didn't just move into Jerusalem. They took it by force. Before the few verses we shared today, Hananiah has just predicted, prophesied, an end to Israel's exile from Jerusalem. Within two years, I will bring back this place all the articles from the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, removed from here and took to Babylon. So Hananiah's prediction of a return to Jerusalem in two years could in fact be seen as a call to arms for the Israelite nation. Maybe Jeremiah, no doubt an intelligent man, could see the writing on the wall. How ill-prepared the exiled Israelites were for such a return to the Lord's house, Jerusalem. Because the text we then read is Jeremiah's response to this declaration of Hananiah. At first, Jeremiah seems to bless the words of Hananiah. Amen, he says. May the Lord do so. And then he goes on to express a hope that what Hananiah has just recounted as coming from the Lord. And then there's a but, like all good sermons. But now listen to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all people. And basically Jeremiah declares that all that has been predicted in the past, the wars, the famines, and the pestilence were not from the Lord, i.e. they were all false prophecies and in fact the true prophet will speak of peace. Is anyone else thinking of Jesus at this point? Again, something we miss from only having a short passage to read is a talk of the yoke and the significance of its breaking and the fact that the yoke is a metaphor for the stranglehold the Babylonians have over the Israelites. Verse 10 continues. Then the prophet Hananiah took the yoke from the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it. And Hananiah spoke in the presence of all people saying, Thus says the Lord, this is how I will break the yoke of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon from the neck of all the nations within two years. It would appear following this discussion, which don't forget is in the presence of all people. This isn't a secret conversation or boast from Hananiah. And therefore it would appear that King Nebuchadnezzar hears of this conversation and takes action against the Israelite nation under his control. We hear after some time Jeremiah being instructed by the Lord. Go tell Hananiah, thus says the Lord, you have broken wooden bars only to forge iron bars in place of them. Ouch. Instead of a return to the house of the Lord, the Israelite nation is subjected to more harsher treatment from their captors, replacing wood with iron. I believe that here scripture speaks to us in our current time of pandemic and how we emerge from it. For me, the feeling I get from this context is a message of caution patience and peace. We need to act cautiously. We are all, I believe, looking forward to return to the house of the Lord. Our buildings are 
a part of who we are as a church. But to rush back too soon and without following proper processes does in fact run the risk of a reoccurrence of infection rate climbing to a much talked about second spike. And judging by the publicised queues outside Primark, I'm guessing there is a huge desire to get back to normal, but again, risking this second spike. Don't forget, this virus is much deadlier than any Babylonian army. So, please be patient with your church leadership as we battle with the tough decisions ahead of us. And please be at peace, knowing that the Lord doesn't need a house. He's everywhere. The Lord, through the Holy Spirit, is more than capable of joining us together. And in fact, I believe we are together right now through the Spirit. Take a moment to feel the presence of the Spirit, which is with you, wherever you are. So stop, pause, feel that peace. And so we join in song once more. In the darkness, we were waiting without hope, without light. King of Kings. See 
Our gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. And again, you might want to pause this uh, recording so that you can find the place in your Bible. So Matthew 10, 40 to 42. And it's entitled Rewards. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous person. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward and so we come to the second part of our sermon this morning following on from last week's lectionary and the previous verses from matthew at last we have some good news of reward this discourse is a part of the whole sending out of the 12 episode in the gospels and this sending out features in all three synoptic gospels. Matthew covers the sending out from chapter 9, verses 35, to chapter 11, verse 1. Luke covers the sending out in chapter 9, verse 1 to 9. And Mark, chapter 6, verses 7 to 13. As you can tell by the number of verses involved, Matthew gives this sending out a lot more attention than the other two gospel writers. Matthew's account of the sending out includes a lot more dialogue, a lot more of Jesus' teaching around the subject. In previous verses, Jesus teaches his disciples the harsh realities of following him. Sheep amongst wolves, a man against father, a daughter, against mother challenges us to reflect on the cost of discipleship and faith and as Yvonne highlighted last week in her sermon we are very fortunate in the safety of the United Kingdom to be able to worship our chosen religion without fear and in perfect freedom however what I think we're being asked to contemplate this week is that word welcome i for one must have preached on being a welcoming church a number of times we've had numerous church and elders meetings about church decline and a number of worshippers attending on sunday we've talked about the challenge of sunday no longer being special and how we are competing with football and shops being open on sunday etc for people's attention and quite frankly we're losing the fight but here's the link with our matthew passage jesus sends out the 12 they are as we hear lambs amongst wolves they are going into a difficult situations they will meet ignorance and distrust but there will be reward for their going out. It won't be for nothing. Yes, as described in Luke and Mark's Gospels, sometimes they will not be welcomed and they must shake the dust off their feet in response. However, some will be healed and some will hear the good news. And we are being forced up out of our safe and cosy church buildings. For the first time in generations, we can't meet in the city centre or at Baggington Road. Those with smartphones, tablets and computers have been sent out into a new world, that of the internet, where whole communities exist. But we are being heard. The good news is being heard. People are viewing church webcasts. 
YouTube videos and live streaming services by the thousands. I can report the following numbers from our own YouTube channel. Last month, 846 views, 6,544 minutes of viewing time in one month. This shows that people beyond West Orchard and Warwick Road congregations are tuning in to our Sunday service. These figures are our reward for trying a different approach. This may be an answer to the worries we've had about how to increase bombs on seats. This is real outreach. But here's the challenge. Even as we anticipate with some joy our return to our buildings, the Lord's house, as Jeremiah describes it, we mustn't lose sight of the impact of being online is having. And we have to find a way to incorporate being online into our church life as a new normal. For it is clearly a way some people have chosen to draw near to God. When we get back into our church building, we need to remember we are called to go out into the world with the good news of Christ. Perhaps we can get to grips with live streaming the service. Perhaps we can continue to record services and upload. My vision is to enable as many of you as possible to be able to do this. Yes, it's technology. Yes, some of it is fiddly and difficult to understand at first. But with patience and with time, we can learn to be a virtual church as well as a physical one, meeting the needs of both our local community and the virtual online community. And I believe we will see the rewards of which Jesus speaks, because I believe that if local people find our virtual presence, they will want to in time try the physical church. But of course, we don't all have computers and hence Zoom and YouTube are strangers to many. And therefore, I hope you appreciate our efforts as your ministry team to try to include everyone in the same worship by all audio CDs, paper copies of the service. And of course, going forward, we'll review and build on this current situation. But for now, finally, keep safe, stay well, and until we meet in person once again, God bless. We share together our next hymn, Servant King, from heaven you came, helpless babe, entered our world, your glory veil.
his heart with sorrow was torn Yet not my will but yours he said This is our God, the servant King He calls us now to follow that speak of sacrifice hands that flaunt stars into space to cruel nails surrender this is our God the servant's king he calls us now to prayers for others our prayers of intercession so let us pray loving God we come this morning first thanking you for all the many blessings you have sent our way we thank you for your steadfast love that endures forever we want to tell you how often we feel so like Jeremiah that we are alone exiled and far from home we often feel like the Israelites and wonder how long this isolation is going to last we often wonder how long we will be in lockdown how long will this madness last how long must we deny ourselves the hugs and contact of loved ones we so desire we ask when we will receive our reward will we be able to go on with life when it feels like covid19 has lasted forever lord we call on your steadfast love to take us out of this pit we call on you for your mercy to reach out to those who need your healing touch during this extraordinary time. We call on your faithfulness for all who are struggling with their faith. We call on your care for those who are less fortunate to be the Lord who provides for their needs. We pray for our troubled world, for all those caught up in the racial tensions at this time. 
We pray for those facing unemployment following this devastating pandemic. We pray in particular for those who have lost loved ones to this virus. We pray for common sense to prevail as we emerge from lockdown so that we don't get a reoccurrence of this terrible virus, a so-called second spike. We give you thanks for all key workers who continue to keep the country running. And we pray for the mental well-being of the many who have been furloughed and who are unable to work. We pray for those who are finding God for the first time because they can now access many church services online. We pray they find a deep and meaningful, loving relationship with you, Lord, through your word, which is now truly online. And we pray that churches continue to use the internet to spread your word and your love even further into the many virtual online communities. And we pray that when we are allowed back into our buildings, we continue to find the resources to share your word and your love online. We pray for our friends and families during this difficult time of isolation. And give them thanks that we are able to start to meet once more. And finally, we pray for ourselves that we might be restored to you through these unprecedented times, that during this enforced period of stillness, we have come to know you more, to hear you more, to love you more. Our God, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Saviour, and in your name we pray. Amen. And so we share our final hymn. Saviour, he can move the mountains, mighty to save.
My God is mighty to say, He is mighty to say, forever, author of salvation. close with a blessing go now as those who have been brought from death to life and welcome the Christ in all whom you meet present yourselves to God to be put to work in the service of righteousness and may God provide for you in mercy may Jesus Christ greet you as you welcome the stranger and may the Holy Spirit lead you in the ways of sanctification and eternal life. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>